Hello IT Pros and welcome back to my IT workshop. So in this video we're going to create some scripts in PowerShell, then we're going to test them of course, and then finally we're going to convert them into uh, executable files. But before that I want to show you this video. Uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. I made it uh, some weeks ago or last week, I, I don't remember, but it's about creating a RAID 1 or mirror hard drive. So uh, your computer is backed up locally all your files, your important files are backed up. And what we're going to do in this video is create uh, some scripts to back up your files as well. All right. So again, uh, this video is very interesting. If you are, well, if you want to know more about it, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So uh, yeah, the first thing I did is I am on my D, D drive or D partition and I have created three folders, A, B and C. B and C are empty. Folder A, I have I have put three files. The, one of them is a TXT file. You can see my active workshop and a few items there. The other is a picture. It's an SSD uh, which I use in my videos. And the last one is one of, my, one of my videos, understanding the DHCP protocol, which I will also leave the link in the description below. So what we are going to do with PowerShell, we are going to copy them to folder B, folder C uh, through scripts. And that simulates that you can have your files, may, maybe it's an important file for the company or for you, and you can back them up somewhere else. Okay. Now, uh, the, the next thing we're going to do, we, um, we're going to need obviously PowerShell. We cannot do anything without PowerShell. And PowerShell is already installed in Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7. I'm not sure about Windows Vista, but we don't use that anymore. And the way you can find it is you type PowerShell you can see it there, you right click on it and run as administrator. So you have all the rights, or at least we think we have all the rights. So we go to uh, folder A, so we need the path, we need the source and destination path for to, to make this, uh, this script um, works. <laughs> so uh, you have there the path for, um, and the name of any of the files. I'm going to copy the text file first, so we need the name. So I'm going to introduce you to the first command, copy item. So very straightforward. And we need the path, we need the source. So it's the folder A, and that's the name of the folder, and what file we are going to copy, test.txt. So they have to be in quotation marks because they are not commands, they are well, path or destination. And we need the destination, and you type destination there, and since we already have it, we're just going to copy paste it because the only thing that is going to change here is folder B and the name of the A of the file. So as you see here, I changed it already and you can change the name of the file as well. I'm going to do it in this one, test one.txt and I press enter. I don't have any errors, so I go back, folder B and I have my file. So the copy has been successful. Next, I'm going to copy my uh, if you press the up arrow key on the keyboard, it's going to give you the last command that you have executed. So if you do that, you're going to see the command and you can edit that command. Now, uh, I'm going to copy the video now. It's called DHCP protocol that P, no, that MP4. And this time I'm not going to change the name. I mean, I'm going to keep it uh, DHCP protocol that MP4. And uh, I'm just going to press enter. And now we go back and now we can see that the uh, that the video has been copied as well. Now, as you might imagine, the, the bigger the file you want to copy, the more it's going to take. And obviously also the distance, maybe it's another computer, it's going to take longer. Now, next, um, but what if I want to copy the entire folder? Um, I type CLS to, clean, to clear the screen. And I don't want to copy one by one. I want to copy all the folders. So what do we do in that case? Maybe I have 100 files there, 100 TXT files. I'm, I don't want to copy them one by one. So the only thing we have to do to copy all the folder is the folder name and backward slash and the star symbol, which you can get by pressing shift and eight. And now we need the destination, which is folder C, which is empty at the moment. 
and we don't need any file name because we're going to copy everything and then we press um, ah oh, I forgot about this command we have to type this command which is recurse I'm making a mistake there <laughs> but the recurse is if you have subfolders on the on the or or original folder you need recourse if you don't type recourse and you have so folders it's not going to copy it but in this case we don't if you don't type recourse it, it, it's not going to make a difference but always type recourse anyway <laughs> so as you can see folder c is now with the three files so we have a copy of that and now cls again but what if we we are working well first i'm going to add more items to my txt file in folder a if i don't if i don't save it in uh, notepad and i copy them it's going to be replaced but since i haven't saved it it's going to be the same file so as you can see here it's, it's not doing anything it's the same file but you don't know that y you you get the point uh, uh as you have seen every time i copy it it just replace the old one so we only have one file all the time the latest file or the laces we have copied but what if we don't want that and for that um, I want to well here I'm showing you that I save it this time and now it's copying the right one with the updates and all that but what if we we are working on a spreadsheet or we are working on some documents that we need to we, we need to have a record to say hey I made this change at I don't know the day uh, today at 3 30 and i made this other change at 4 p.m well what if you need to that so we are not accomplishing that with this simple script so we are going to change that as well so now here i'm adding um, a few more items but maybe you don't need them so that's what i'm trying to explain a few seconds ago maybe you need a record of what you have been doing or somebody has been doing uh, about that uh, that document or that folder so I'm going to introduce you to this command get date. If I just have the command get date, it's going to give me the day and the date and, and the time, of course. But it's too long. So I'm going to add some formatting to that. So get date, format, and a quotation mark and the year, three Y's, but I just type three uh, four Y's, but I just type three, but it works anyway. <laughs> But you can do it, we have year, month, and day. You can do it day, month, and year. You can change that. There is no problem. So anything that works for you. And what if I need the time as well? The date is important, but the entire day, I mean, today, the entire day is 27. I need the time. I need, I need to be more precise. So I type H-A-H-M-M-S-S for 24 hours. And if you don't like 24 hours format, you can do change the uh, uh, the age for lowercase so that way you have um, you don't have you have the 12 hours format but i don't like it because i can manage it better that way <laughs> so w the question would be why don't you put this i mean like uh, a real clock and the reason is you can do it as you can see here but what i want to accomplish is this information i want it to be the name of my file so the, when you name a file you cannot name it um, parentheses or dollar symbol or all that you cannot do it so that's why i'm going to keep it that way okay so well, uh, now i'm going to introduce you to powershell ise which is the editor for scripts so again it's installed in your in your computer you don't you don't have to do anything so you just look for it and you open it um, the upper part is to type the scripts and the lower part is to see what happens when you execute those commands or those scripts so now what we are going to do since we have everything we're just going to copy paste instead of typing everything one more time so to copy you just select what you need right click and then you come here right click and paste okay but this informa information the way it is is not useful to me so I'm going to introduce you to variables. So variables are containers that can hold information. So to call a to declare a variable, you need the dollar symbol, as you can see there. And then you can name it whatever you want. You can name it Mia, you can name it John, you can name it Door, whatever. But date makes sense because we're using date. So date is going to store the 
um, what this command is going to give me back, which is the date, as, as we have been doing here. Right, then we're going to need the other command, the long one, the one that we have been doing, the copying, this folder, this file, and all that. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's the same. I'm going to copy an item from folder uh, partition D, folder A, which is called test.txt, and the destination is going to be in the same partition D, folder B, test.txt. Okay, so we have done that before. I'm just copy pasting it. And now we're going to do something, but first, uh, I don't like how it looks. I want you to see everything in the same line, so it's, it's more understandable. And test.txt and quotation mark. Now I'm going to do the interesting thing. I'm going to call the variable. I'm going to type uh, underscore. You don't need to type underscore, by the way, but I just do it to be more readable. And, and now I'm going to call the variable uh, dollar sign $date. Now we're going to see what happens. And now uh, I'm going to run it. As you can see there, uh, there is the run button, that green one, and it's telling me that it's going to be safe. Uh, okay, th th that's okay. But it's telling me that this cannot be load because running a script is disabled in this system, which I expected. So if you see this, you have to um, type some commands to enable yourself running your session, your user running some uh, scripts. So the command is get execution policy list and you can see there. So I go I want to give myself permission, which is current user and it's undefined. So in order to give me access or to give me permission <laughs> to run PowerShell command, I have to type set execution policy unrestricted because well that's what I want a scoped current user which is you or you can give it to any other user that you may need and it's here is telling you that this might be uh, dangerous because some other people can run scripts on your behalf on your session but but if we don't say yes what we are going to do we won't be able to do anything so you I just type why then you can take out that those permissions by the way you can do it with no problems but for now we need that so now I can run it I have no errors this time and now I'm going to go to folder B. Go to folder B, and you can see that the test underscore is telling me the date and exact time, even with seconds. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And now, uh, I but I it's working, but I don't want to be opening this all the time. I don't want to remember this. I don't want to copy paste it. I want to turn it into well, first. I'm going to save. I want to turn it into an executable file. But first, I'm going to save. So I go to file save us and I'm going to give it a name which is uh, you can give it any name you want but for this one I'm going to give it copy underscore files so allow me a few seconds to bring it from the other screen and there you are but if I double click on this it just opens a txt file uh, it's not useful at all so now that's why we need something to convert from PowerShell script to exe. So here is the website. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. It's a Microsoft website, but this script has not been made by Microsoft, has been made like uh, uh, by a person like you, like me, who likes to uh, write scripts and share it with the world, with people who need this. So this one has more than 30,000 downloads <laughs> and I ran the scan for viruses and I didn't find any virus on this. So I could say it's pretty secure, but th this is up to you, of course. Okay, so uh, it's a compressed file um, in folder. You have to extract it. I tried to run it because the last one is the only thing we need. So to extract extract it, you just need to type uh, a folder, a ta uh, where you want to do it. I want to do it in my desktop, as you have seen here on the left. I have created a, a folder called ps2exe or PowerShell2exe. So now that is decompressed, I'm going to all select. You have seen the menu there. It's really simple. You just open the the source file, which is in this case copy files. You can type a description, an icon file, to a little picture for your executable, and you just type complete. And this is the screen. You just click uh, press enter, and then you have your executable file. It's really quick. It's really quick. Well, the script is not very long anyway. So now I'm going to do it next to the folder. So I'm just going to double click on it. It's an executable file and there you go. It's copying it with just two clicks. 
okay so every time I click it's going to save it obviously it's the same file because I haven't done any change to it but it can be uh, backed up as many times as you need it now uh, I have delete them I don't need them for now and what I'm going to do now is what I was talking about I'm going to add more data for example SATA cable excuse me I'm going to save it I'm going to run it and now I'm going to I'm going to see it uh, folder B and we have SATA cable but now on folder A I'm going to modify this I'm going to delete a few items and I'm going to stay camera monitor and desktop PC I'm going to save it I'm going to run the copy command well not the copy the, the copy ex executable file and I have both now so I have a copy for each okay it's not being replaced all the time all the time I have multiple copies of what I need so that's pretty cool now uh, I'm going to do one more uh, I'm going to uh, it's a very simple command is to shut down the computer and I'm going to open a new one new file and now the command is pretty simple it's only one line and is um, stop computer <laughs> very simple right very intuitive and I'm going to force it to do that so what this command does is it's going to shut down your computer there, there are commands to restart there are commands to log off I mean you can do pretty much anything that your imaginations allows you to do so of course if I run the command right now the computer is going to shut down so what's the point so I'm going to save it and then and it's going to close everything so it doesn't it doesn't let you know hey you are uh, uh, your excel is open or your game is open no it doesn't do anything it just shuts down the computer and now i'm going to save it it's going to call a shut computer you can well that didn't sound <laughs> well but it's going to shut down your computer uh, i'm going to do the same process i'm going to open this uh, script that we have downloaded from the internet and again I'm going to leave the link in the description below for that one if I didn't mention before so now it's done I'm going to bring the executable and here we are so this script is interesting because many people I know don't like to go to, uh, through all the process of press yes I know it's super difficult right to press um, the start button then select restart or shut down or log off they don't they don't like that so if they don't like it well you can create this executable so they just double click on it and the computer is going to shut down so that's pretty pretty cool so what we're going to do now is since i cannot do it from here i'm going to start to continue recording on my cell phone so i'm going to see you in a few seconds and see what and see what happens here we are back <laughs> that was quick and now I'm going to double click on this um, uh, shutdown computer or shut computer <laughs> I'll double click on it and the computer is shutting down as you can see here it's in the other monitor shutting down and that, that's it you can configure it to restart to do, or do anything that you need to do for any client not for yourself I gave this to my mom I mean this this PowerShell command and she can do it faster now <laughs> So that's what I wanted to show you today, guys. A few scripts in PowerShell, how to turn it into, how to convert them into uh, executable files and what you can do with them. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.